In a previous video, we saw that the pores of hydrophilic materials may undergo capillary condensation, even at relative humidity below 100%, and develop a meniscus. In this video, we examine the reverse process of drying. We will see how the curvature of those menisci are at the origin of drying shrinkage, a process that is damaging to many materials. The condensation of water in hydrophilic porous materials creates a curve liquid vapor interface. Neglecting gravity effects, these menisci form equivalently regardless of the orientation of the pore. For convenience, we now look at the top of a vertical cylindrical pore. For such a geometry, we saw that the Kelvin equation could be written as natural log of relative humidity equals minus 2 VL gamma LV over RT times 1 over RLV. As humidity decreases, this means that the radius of the liquid vapor interface, RLV, decreases. That is, the meniscus becomes more sharply concave. This curvature has an important implication through the Young-Laplace equation, which tells us that there is a pressure difference between a liquid and its vapor at curved interfaces. This is given by the product between the curvature, kappa LV, and the liquid vapor interfacial energy, gamma LV. As discussed in our capillary condensation video, in a hydrophilic material, the curvature of a meniscus of condensed water in a cylindrical pore is kappa LV equals minus 2 over RLV, assuming a contact angle of zero. So, we find that the pressure in the liquid is lower than the pressure in the vapor. When RH is 100%, the liquid vapor interface is flat, so RLV is infinite and PL equals PV. As humidity increases, RLV decreases, and so does PL. As a result, PL minus PV becomes increasingly negative, while PV remains constant. According to the Kelvin equation, PL equals PV plus VL over RT times natural log of RH. And this is equal to zero when the relative humidity is about 99.9%. .9%. And PL becomes negative at lower values of RH. The liquid will cavitate, that is, bubbles of vapor will form, if PL reaches about minus 100 megapascal, corresponding to RH equals about 47.7%, and RLV is about 1.4 nanometers. The length of the bar for PL would then be about 1000 times larger than PV and therefore cannot be well displayed on this graph. Let us illustrate the change in curvature with relative humidity in a tube with one end open and the other end with a hemispherical closure. The more the relative humidity decreases, the smaller is RLV and the lower is the liquid pressure or the greater is the suction exerted by the liquid. The meniscus can enter the tube once the relative humidity drops to the critical value of RH crit given by natural log of RH crit equals minus VL over RT times 2 gamma LV over R minus delta, where delta is the thickness of the adsorbed film of water on the surface of the tube. Any attempt to decrease the local relative humidity below RH crit will be countered by evaporation of condensed water. Eventually, once the pores are empty, only the liquid film will remain and humidity can then decrease below RH crit. In real materials, with a pore size distribution, there is a range of humidity over which the drying takes place. Moreover, 
interconnection between pores allow water to move between these pores, with water being removed first from the coarse pores and then from the finer ones as humidity decreases. In this illustration, we represent the solid skeleton of a porous material in black and its water-filled porosity in blue. It starts drying from the top as relative humidity decreases and we show the empty pores in white. Above a critical humidity, denoted breakthrough relative humidity, most of the material remains water-saturated with the interface between water and air occurring at pores or pore necks with a radius smaller than the liquid vapor curvature imposed by the relative humidity. At or below that breakthrough value of relative humidity, the menisci can pass through small enough pores to allow vapor to penetrate throughout the body. However, even at that point, smaller pores may remain full of water until the relative humidity drops even further. We note that water mainly evaporates on the outer surfaces of the porous body and is mostly transported there through the liquid film on the pore walls and or pores that are yet to be emptied. A special case is the so-called bottleneck pore. We can illustrate this with a series of ink bottle pores where the interior radius, R interior, is much larger than the pore entry radius, R entry. At low relative humidity, only a film of thickness delta is adsorbed. As humidity is raised, condensation first occurs in the pore entry, or neck, which is essentially an open-ended tube. This happens when the relative humidity satisfies natural log of RH entry condensation equals minus VL over RT times gamma LV over R entry minus delta. As relative humidity increases beyond RH entry condensation, the radius of the meniscus in the entryway continuously increases and the condensed liquid front advances into the larger pore until eventually RH interior is reached, which happens when natural log of RH interior equals minus VL over RT times 2 gamma LV over R interior minus delta. The condensation of water in the interior of the bottle would then be thermodynamically possible. However, a kinetic factor may slow down the filling of the pore interior as trapped air has to diffuse out through many bottlenecks containing condensed water. Upon drying, there is a hysteresis. That is, the pore empties at a lower relative humidity than was required to fill it. Indeed, taking our previous illustration, we see that the central cavities will only empty once the relative humidity drops below RH entry evaporation so that the radius of the meniscus is small enough to pass through the entry. At that point, the liquid in the interior is unstable so both the entry and the interior of the pore empty spontaneously. Similar situations are encountered in most real porous materials as these generally contain a network of interconnected pores with varying diameters. As already mentioned, some of these pores may remain filled with water until very low relative humidities and, along with the liquid film on the walls of emptied pores, transport water out of the material where evaporation mainly takes place. The reason why some large pores can remain saturated with local patches of a drying material is illustrated in this figure. Indeed, this shows that desorption from larger cavities, such as this one, is often blocked by narrow entries, which in essence is a larger scale version of the bottleneck pore case we previously discussed. Such situations can lead to substantial amounts of liquid 
remaining in a dry material until low relative humidity is reached. Importantly, the pressure of that liquid within porous materials drops substantially below atmospheric pressure as relative humidity decreases. In later stages of drying, the liquid films are disconnected, so evaporation occurs inside the pores and vapor diffuses to the surface. This is a much slower process than flow of liquid films. The lower pressure in the liquid means that the liquid imposes suction on the porous material. This causes many materials to shrink and or crack, as explained in a separate video. In conclusion, beginning with the smallest pores, condensation occurs in hydrophilic, porous materials as relative humidity rises. As materials dry out, their pores empty from the coarsest to the finest, but with a certain hysteresis, meaning that the pores empty at a lower relative humidity than that at which they filled. This comes from the so-called bottleneck pores and is characteristic of interconnected pores of different sizes. The liquid remaining in such materials during drying is at a lower pressure than the atmosphere, creating a suction that can cause shrinkage and or cracking, as will be detailed in our video on drying shrinkage stress.